Last week, we talked about the three pillars of exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. In this video, we are going to dig into the aperture and we will see why it is so important in photography and how it affects the depth of field of our images. Welcome to my channel and welcome to episode 3 of Learning Photography on YouTube. If you're here for the first time and you don't want to miss the next episodes of this photography course, it might be a good idea to subscribe. Thanks for submitting your images this week. I'm happy to see that you are willing to learn and put some work in. Today, as well, at the end of this video, I will give you some assignments related to today's topic so you can immediately put in practice what you're learning and keep yourself engaged in this photography journey. And by the way, next week I'm going to review some of your images. So show me what you got. Okay, let's go. Aperture. We mentioned last week that in order to achieve a well-exposed image, we need to capture the right amount of light. And the first element to control the light that reaches the sensor is the lens. Every lens will have different apertures. By the way, at the end of this course, I will have a video dedicated to how to choose your lenses. And you will see that this video will be pretty helpful to that process too. Anyways, the aperture is the hole that let the light in. Apertures are measured in f-stop. And the smaller f-stop number corresponds to the wider aperture of your lens, where more light comes in. For instance, this lens has its wider aperture at f1.8 and its smallest aperture at f16. And every f-stop increase will let half of the light in. So f2.8 will let in half of the light compared to f1.8. F4 will let in half of the light compared to f2.8. F5.6 will let in half of the light of f4. I'm sure you got this part. But aperture controls also another very important element in photography, which is the depth of field. Depth of field is the area which is in focus, measured from the closest object in focus to the furthest away. If we use a very open aperture, so a small f-stop number like f1.8, the depth of field will be very limited. The area in focus will be very shallow. And this is why this is called shallow depth of field. If we use instead a very closed aperture, so a big f-stop number like f16, f22, the area in focus will be very deep and we will be able to achieve a larger depth of field. A quick way to remember which aperture does what is that the bigger f-stop number will have the larger depth of field. f22, large. f1.8, small. Let's put this in practice now. So I set up this little scene and I will take a first picture, focusing on the background and using aperture f1.8. For this demonstration, since the only element of my exposure that I want to control is the aperture, I will set my camera in aperture priority. Which means that I can manually change the aperture that I want to use and the camera will automatically change the shutter speed. So I don't need to worry about anything else, just my aperture. If you saw some of my landscape photography videos in the past, you will know that aperture priority is my favorite setting. You can see that my background is perfectly sharp, but the foreground is completely out of focus. So we have a super shallow depth of field, which in this case will drive the attention of my viewer to the background of my photo. Wider apertures and uh, shallow depth of field are often used in uh, portrait photography and product photography, where the photographer wants to drive the viewer attention to the main subject, trying to isolate the main subject from any other elements in the frame that can create distraction. Now, without moving any elements in my scene and without 
changing the focus, but changing my aperture to a smaller f-stop. Let's see, f2, f2.2, 2.5, 2.8. You can see that gradually also my foreground is coming in focus. And if I drive my aperture all the way to f16, which is the smallest aperture in this lens, everything is perfectly in focus. Foreground to background. So when my scene develops in depth, and I want to make sure that the viewer will be able to see clearly the foreground and the background, basically every layer, every plane of my scene, I will need to use a more closed aperture. We will talk more in depth about these in one of the future episodes of this course dedicated to focus and hyperfocal distance. For now, let's remember that the larger depth of field is obtained by using smaller apertures. And it's typically used in architecture photography or landscape photography. I think that now you have a better understanding of how aperture affects depth of field. But practice makes perfect. So let's talk about this week assignment. This is what I suggest you to do. Set your camera in aperture priority. Find a composition or create a scene where you have an element in the foreground and an element in the background. Take a photo with a very shallow depth of field, focus on the background element where the foreground is completely out of focus. In the next video, I will review the most creative images and give a shout out to the Instagram accounts of their authors. So post your image on Instagram, tag me, Attilio Rufo Photography, and use the hashtag L-P-O-Y-D-O-F. Learning Photography on YouTube, Depth of Field. And be creative. And we are done for today. The third episode of Learning Photography on YouTube is over. Next Thursday, we are going to talk about shutter speed. And as I said, we are also going to review your photos. So this weekend, make sure to go out and shoot. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new today. If you did, hit the like button now and maybe share this video with your friends that you know they want to learn photography like you. Invite them over. At the same time, if you want to make sure to see my future videos, consider to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.